And I, I do that especially today because of the young people in the audience, and I want them to recognize that even though you know, we may be psychologist this or leader that or important person whatever, uh, we all have a responsibility to submit to the guidance of eldership. And elders have the responsibility of protecting our community from the worst form of disease, which is ignorance, particularly ignorance of self. And so by asking elder if I have permission to speak, I am giving elder in this community that responsibility of guaranteeing that they should know what I have to say. And if I say something stupid, or if I've said something stupid in the past, they would be able to tell me, no, you cannot speak. And then I would simply ask eldership, what is it that I have failed to learn so that I can go and learn it and thereby be of better service to my community. But it is with my elders' permission, I now ask all of you to allow me to assume a posture of reverence and respect while I give praise and credit to the source of all knowledge and all truth. And I do that by saying out loud that the Almighty, who is sometimes called Amun, and is sometimes called Aset, and is sometimes called Ptah, and is sometimes called Seshat, and is sometimes called Jehovah, and is sometimes called Obatullah, and is sometimes called the Christ, and is sometimes called Oshun, and is sometimes called Shango, and is sometimes called Allah, and it is sometimes called Oya, and it is sometimes called Olodumari, and it is sometimes called Atum, that Almighty God, Amun, Ptah, Ra, although hidden, is the source of all knowledge, all truth, and all wisdom. And I pray in what I share with you this morning that Amun, Tehuti, Orumila will be satisfied. Again, it is important for me to try to teach. And in teaching, I want the young people to recognize that what I've done is to provide the name or the praise names that African people have used across time for the Almighty. And that oftentimes we end up fighting wars about what is religion. And in the African tradition, it's never been about what is religion, but it's been about celebrating the spirit of our being and that spirit of our being manifesting itself in our behavior. So it's important that we recognize some truisms that sometimes we forget. Uh, the first truism is that every process ends in a product, even though the process never ends. And so as we talk about developing, raising up, training, educating our young people, we should see that as a process of development. But more importantly, we should know what is the product that we want to create. Because the drive of process without a vision of the product is to engage in activity that has no direction or vision. And so it is important that we talk about the product and it is clear, and I'm, I'm assuming that it is clear in this, in this body, that the product we're talking about raising up and, and training and developing is African men and women. Now that doesn't mean that we're talking about sending people back to Africa. It means that we are always going to be African and wherever we find ourselves, whether it be Philadelphia or Oakland or Alabama or Brazil or Cairo or Ghana or, or Oshun, wherever we find ourselves, we're African people. And it's in the context of those various places that we make decisions about what uh, we're going to do as African people. The other axiom that I think is equally important is the recognition that the experiences of one generation become the history of the next generation and the history of several generations become the traditions of a people. Now the reason why that's important is because what we do today becomes the history of the next generation. And if we continue to do the same thing over and over again, that becomes our tradition. Now if we look and see what our communities are like we can ask the question, do we want those kinds of things, the drive-bys, the crack cocaine, the, 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 the inappropriate sexual behavior, the, the disrespect of men, and men towards women and women towards men, do we want that to become the traditions of African people? If we do not, and I, and, I, and I think I'm not guessing here, we do not. If we do not, then we have to begin talking about how do we change the experiences of African people so that our history is different and then our history becomes the tradition of our people. 
I believe the way we change that is to focus on the development of the next generation and to, ch and to challenge ourselves with how do we create an experience of young people that results in the kind of uh, African minimum we want. That's a difficult task. It's a difficult task because we have to engage in intelligence, as Brother Eugene talks about, that sometimes we're not uh, accustomed to dealing with. We have to engage in areas of, of study that sometimes we're not uh, comfortable with or having experience in dealing with. We have to begin to contemplate and to work in, in study groups and discussion and discourse that allows us to think about things. But we have to do that in an area that hasn't been contaminated. And this is an important point. A lot of the information we have about African people has been contaminated, meaning filtered through non-African people to reflect who they are and not to say anything about what African people are. So we have to begin to try to find that area, that point where we have information that represents who we are. And I suggest, in, in, in looking at my own work as a psychologist, that while we talk about psychology and it's being important to human development, and we talk about philosophy as being important to uh, understanding the meaning of what it is to be human, ultimately the area we, we have to start in is not psychology or philosophy, it is theology. It is theology in the context that theology has to do with the rational study of the being of God. It is not the sanctified rituals that we do in Presbyterian church versus Baptist church versus Catholic church versus uh, the, uh, the, the mosque of Islam or the temple of Judaism. It is really talking about the rational study of the being of God. And in the African tradition, interestingly enough, when you talk about the being of God, you're talking about us. You're talking about people because the being of God is that people represent the manifestation of the God force. Now, dealing with that becomes sometimes frightening because of our indoctrinations in terms of our own embracing a particular uh, religious tradition. But theology becomes important because of that rational study, but it is more important because the theology of a community, if you will, the theology of African people, assumes the truth of itself by locating it at the moment of those people's beginning. What that says is that our African theology, and thereby philosophy, and ultimately psychology, assumes the truth of its reality at the moment that African people were born. Now, when were African people born? Was it during slavery? Was it during the, 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 the quest for educational excellence in Timbuktu and Mali and Ghana and Songhai? Our children should know what those moments are about. But I would offer to you and suggest to you that the moment of our beginning was the time before there was time. It was the time before there was time, and that is the time when we weren't contaminated with European ideas about black inferiority and about the inability and the, and, 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 the, and, the, and the negativity of African people. It is that moment that, that we see now in our researches and our studies that Africans begin to talk about divine law. Now it is this divine law that is important for us as we talk about it. I hope you can appreciate that. I'm not starting out saying, here's the five things you need to teach young boys to be African men, or here are the 10 things you need to teach young girls how to be African uh, women, but rather setting the foundation in the context in which our development must occur. It is not enough, we can't have these sort of Dr. Spock prescriptions about how you raise a black child. You have to understand the nature of our beingness as African people and then, and then influence the process so that the product that comes out of that process is in fact ours. And our ancestors 40,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago, and I, I point that marker because it is good for young people when at those moments when you begin to think you want to identify with somebody else and think that the Asians are better than us or the Europeans are better than us or, or some other folk are better than us, just locate where they were 40,000 years ago. And if you can find a people that were doing what we were doing 40,000 years ago, then follow them. But if you can't find a people, then at least look at your own path, your own footsteps in history and follow those. And 40,000 years ago, our uh, ancestors begin to talk about theology as the study of God's being and that the community must, every community must continue to attempt to define for its generation its reason for being in the world. That's an important question. 
What is your reason for being in the world? African people have to answer that question. What is our reason, particularly African-American?